my mantra on set, right, was mm. every day, speed. What is the fastest we can go? I couldn't believe how fast the cars were going. That was tough. Hello, I'm Jan Mardenbrough, a racing driver, and the dude that Gran Turismo the movie is based off. The 10 of you are the best Gran Turismo players in the world. Now is your chance to race real cars. This is insane. Jan, when did you first get introduced to Gran Turismo? So I was eight. My parents had friends across the street from where I lived and we went over there and they had a PlayStation 1 and GT1. So I started playing. I remember buying the first car. It was a pink Mitsubishi 3000 GT um, <laughs> mm. from the used car market. And I played, I remember it vividly, Autumn Ring. Um, after that day, I would come home from school and always go over their house to play the game. They gave me the PlayStation because they were fed up with this child <laughs> turning up at their house, and then it just you scored massively. Yeah. That's perfect. Grand Turismo, というのは、まあ僕は PlayStation のチームに入って、あのこれから PlayStation が生まれるっていうそういうタイミングだったんですね。それで、でもじお前なんかビデオゲーム作れって言われて、で百本ぐらい企画書を書いたと思いますけれども、その百本の企画書の中の一つがグランドリスモでした。Because you love cars. And yes. Yeah. I mean, I've always been into cars. I think from a design perspective, there's a, there's a merging of engineering and art with cars. I've always been really passionate about them. My brother is the same way. And his obsession with cars and his obsession with, with racing was my way into it, I think. The initial first play of the game set in motion me to have all the titles since that moment. I play GT because I want to. Imagine what it's like to drive one of these cars for real. Of course, there was other game titles around, but even as eight, an eight-year-old, I could tell that they weren't as realistic. I would not be here today without Gran Turismo. 2000年ぐらいにはグランドリスモをプレイすることで、まあドライビングテクニックを学べるっていうことは分かってはいたんですよ。ただそれを証明する方法がなかった。それが2008年になって、えー、と日産自動車がじゃあグランドリスモのドライバーをプロフェッショナルなレーシングドライバーにしようっていうねプロジェクトを始めてくれたおかげでようやくそれを証明する機会が生まれたわけですよね。The most realistic driving simulator, and there's this whole sequence that shows what goes into making the game so real. How did that all come about? I wanted it to feel as real as possible, and I also wanted、um, I wanted Polyphony to you know feel as authentic as I as I、mm. could make it feel. You know, to to reference real life cars, scan them, and turn them into 3D representations.、And、I remember the very first conversation we had with you. You said, "I want to get that." Great Gran Turismo angle、yeah. in there, and and you also talked about being able to create that virtual car when he's racing. It's in my mind the way that he sees the track and the way that he three dimensionalizes what he's seeing on a two dimensional screen. Circuit driving is, of course, the sky is very high. But in my mind, I have a layout of the track, and I have a layout of the track. I have a layout of the track, and I have a layout of the track. I have a layout of the track, and I have a layout of the track. The way you cut it, the audio, you create this own visual language on、yeah. it, with showing where he is on the screen. Which, which I stole from Gran Turismo. Yeah, that was actually pretty cool. That I could, I could just steal the idea of、yeah. being able to put a hologram over his car so the audience could track him. That was important because I think if the audience loses loses sight of where he is in the race, you kind of lose interest. Yeah. For people who don't know the game, you can be behind the car perfectly, and then you can be in the driver's seat perfectly, and then you can have almost like a grill camera. That's Quite easy to shoot because you can just place a camera at the front of your camera car.、Um, it's not that hard to do. The, the back camera is a little bit more complicated because you need a picture correct, beautiful car. Then you need an incredibly stable arm to hold,、uh, you know, a relatively heavy film camera. But the one that was actually difficult is the one in the driver's POV. To mount one of our Sony Venus Twos inside the car. You have to. You, you're basically bolting it and fixing it in place so it's rock solid. We tried to like pixel perfect match it to Gran Turismo, but the problem obviously then is you're you're physically occupying the space of the stunt driver, 
So all of a sudden now you need a right-hand drive vehicle with, with a right-hand drive stunt driver. With a left-hand drive fake steering wheel with a stunt driver <laughs> who's lying under the camera with his arms pretending to drive. With all these projects, big Sony mission is to obviously create collaboration between creators and inspire creators. And I think when you see the combination of the Venice team coming and helping out with all these great cameras, I think that's something that's really special and I love hearing that. Thank you. Man, that was amazing. That's so wow. good. One of the best Easter eggs is, is the Kaz as the sushi chef. <laughs> Which I love because yeah. it's all about perfection and yeah. creating the perfect thing, and that's why yeah. I thought it was a perfect fit. That yeah, was great. Yeah, Jan, you, you are the stunt driver for the actor that plays you. So that, that must have very, been very really, meta. Yeah, very surreal moment. Like, tell us about how that feel. So I got, uh, well, presented with it, the option to do it in. Uh, early last year and of course I jumped on it I wanted to do that because it's never been done there was a few things that the stunt coordinators and drivers would tell me and the one thing he said where it made things easy for me was if you can't see the camera the camera can't see you and because I'm the main car mm. it's like well I need to be in shot all the time <laughs> In order for it to look fast, we have to be going mm -hmm. quick. It feels more natural when we're doing that. And we had cold track temperatures. We were shooting at not an optimal part of the year. It was shot in the dark. They had to tape the headlights up. But the most difficult part was it was wet and also the track was recently painted. So the white lines were, weren't dry. So when we were driving on the track, we're getting not only water, but it was paint. <laughs> And yeah, I remember that. we had no headlights <laughs> working, oh. so yeah. it looks beautiful. We lost a couple of drones too on, Slo on Slovakia, right? Yeah, yeah. one hit. A couple of drones went down. That's the thing that most impressed me is when going to this set, I couldn't believe how fast the cars were going. Oh, it reminds me of old school filmmaking where you kind of front load your, your budgetary allocation, you know, less into post and more into just the logistics of moving 20 race cars to you know six or seven different racetracks. And you had the drones going top speed, you had mm. helicopters. I mean, such a complex setup, but it actually shows when you see the film and you mm. hear it, these cars are truly going incredibly fast. Yeah. And you got the act actors in there as well. I always laugh at the fact that Archie um, playing Jan is you know not interested in cars, didn't play Gran Turismo, and hated being in the car when we were filming. <laughs> it's like it's so funny, but he's so good as you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it reminded me of putting a cat in water or something. <laughs> like he just refused to get into the vehicle at some point, but uh, he was legitimately on the verge of throwing up. Yeah, and those cars—they're not easy to get inside because he was so tall. He actually we had to remove the seat, mm. so he's sitting on dry carbon. Yeah, but still going at race speed. So his back and he's feeling everything while trying to act as well. But what was cool was when he watched the movie when it was done, he was like, I'm proud that I did that, which I thought was awesome. This whole thing is insane, but out of the couch surfing nerds that you sent me, he is the best one. He made it. I always say, it doesn't matter if you've never heard of the game or played the game, this story is always, it's really for those people who've been told they're not good enough, and everyone's got a yarn story, and I've got my own yarn story as well. So therefore, it's so relatable. That's why your story is so powerful. It felt like a film that had a very positive, uplifting yeah. sentiment and theme. When I started thinking about that, and I started thinking about the, the, the realism of the film, and I wonder if by making the film, there's a 13-year-old version of me that comes out of it sort of inspired to try to do something that seems very difficult to attain. Mm. The older I get and the more experience I have in racing, the more my limits are kind of raised. And now I don't, t I don't think in terms of limits because I can't, why would you place limits on what you can do? I believe you can do anything in life that you set your mind to, but you can't do everything. Mm. So I don't place any limits on where I want to be.